hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are live down here in the basement at Hard Bar and we are recording hard radio tonight in front of a live audience. Uh, I'm your host tonight, Isaiah Jones, and I'm joined by our, our very special guest, Peter Kern. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. Peter, thank you so much for having us, or for being here with us tonight. I really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for coming to my bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That's great. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> nice. Well, Peter, thanks for joining us. How have you been? It's been a little while since we've last seen each other. I've been, it's, it's been a busy, uh, it's been a busy time, but I've been, uh, it's been really good, actually. I, 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 somehow I enjoy the, the dark, Depressive weather in yeah, fall because yeah. it means you know studio season. Is yeah, here. it means it means Berlin and it's it, it means, means Berlin. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, it's true, right? I yeah. mean, it's it's funny. Like I really enjoy Berlin both in the summer and in, like the fall and winter. But I think that Berlin really comes to it comes into itself or its full self. Like you know when it starts to get gray and it's a little bit dark, you can party a little bit longer. Uh, the city starts to really show its bones, so to speak, and uh, I think it's what makes it really exciting. And um, actually, not to talk you know, too much, but I remember my first time coming to Berlin was like the dead middle of winter, it was like February, and um, I wasn't sure I would have fun, but I had the best fucking time of like my whole life. That February, and it was like minus like five the whole time, and snowing and shit, but we partied our faces off. Yeah, exactly. It's guilt, guilt-free partying. Yeah. You, you you go outside and say, well. We we need to hide, huddle together for right, a right. And Why not in a in a club yeah. or or in the studio? Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah or exactly. Both. Yeah, and it's like um, I almost feel like I never feel bad about going out uh, in the winter because it's dark when you go out and it's dark when you come home. So yeah. you, you know, I really even at noon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Twenty four hours of darkness. <laughs> and we've entered that goth goth phase again. Yes. It's upon yeah. us, and it's the full It's moon. real. It's not just us trying to be cool and trendy. It's actually happening. We are here. really depressed, actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And on top of that, it's a full moon tonight, too. Like, we're actually chatting a little bit about that. Like, there's, like, this, like, um, eerie kind of energy in the air, which I love. Like, and I just feel like um, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable because, like, you are going from, like, the end of summer. Not that summer was ever here this summer, but it's now kind of going into, you know, again, like, uh, the edgy, eerie... Uh, I almost want to say bleak, but somehow wonderful time of the year here in Berlin. Yeah, and I have to say, since moving here is probably the, the first time that I started seriously reading horoscopes. I'm not sure exactly how this I happened. started reading horoscopes this, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, including uh, the horoscope I sent is, a, is from a, a good friend of mine who I met again for the first time in Panorama Bar, even yeah. though it turns out that we went to college together in mm -hmm. the 90s. Um, uh, well, I, I feel like we're at the center of a, sort of a, somehow a, a both scientific and pagan atmosphere. Yeah. You have people who are very kind of deeply atheistic, very objective about science and technology. Yeah. And then also somehow interested in this kind of mystical uh, pagan reality at, at the same time. But it's through the, not through the filter of some kind of scientific understanding. Yeah, so. yeah. I think, in other words, I don't think I've completely lost my mind. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> there, there's, there's something going on here, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So I'm really excited to, to chat with you and have you here because um, you're, you're going to be doing a very special live set for us a little bit. But um, first, we're going to have a little bit of a chat. And um, you know, I know that you've just recently uh, completed and released your album. It's Bologna, USA. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the album that you just released and uh, some of your inspiration behind it and the work that you put into it? Well, it is, it is a sort of a, a concept album that came out of being... Uh, well, I, I was looking for a way to frame it and went to this book by uh, Samuel Delaney uh, from uh, 1975 called uh, Dahlgren, okay. which is a vision of a sort of fragmentary, post-apocalyptic America, American Midwest. Yeah. Um, and I, I found this this landscape really compelling and interesting. Yeah. Somehow, Relevant. Somehow almost. modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, they have these kind of uh, projections of, uh, there are holographic projections of insects. He, he The main character has, uh, uh, sort of sleeps with a woman at the beginning of the book and she immediately transforms into a tree. Okay. There's, uh, uh, but you, there, there's this kind of Midwestern city, something has happened. You don't really know what the uh, you don't know what the crisis was. Yeah. Our main character kind of wanders through trying to figure this out, um, and this this sort of city is constantly on fire, and it's not clear that people are even aware that something has happened in the rest of the country. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it did it did have this sort of relevance. Now I, I'm making this sound like a, a really kind of I don't know depressive uh, uh, ambient record, but but somehow I, this also said techno to me. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, so it's it's both. It's it's mostly a techno album that's sort of bookended by these yeah uh, and dy dystopian sort of a uh, ambient moments. So tell me a little more about like the creative process here. Uh, was it more or less you you started reading the book or you finished the book? And uh, what was the aha moment? Like when did you decide or when did the thought come to you that this transcends into music for you? Well, I was. I mean, I was looking for some imagery, and that's kind of how I came across the book because I had I had some sort of musical material and was looking for a way to, to organize it. I, yeah. wanted, I wanted I wanted it to have a narrative, and I wanted it to have some kind of uh, uh, to have some kind of imagery, like um, soundtrack almost. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. A, a, a score yeah. to the to the visual imagery that you're picturing as you're reading it. I um, mean, there was a point when I was a kid when I you know being a writer was sort of also what I imagined. Um, wanting to do as well as being a musician. So I think, um, especially if you've been kind of lost in the world of music, which is very abstract and you kind of don't know which direction it's meant to go, mm -hmm. um, there's something really useful about bringing it back to some kind of narrative or structure or, yeah, yeah. or image. Yeah, awesome. And I was reading also somewhere that um, this album, you've got plans for it to actually have some visual elements to it in the future. Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I've begun the process of turning this into an AV show. Uh, okay. I, I really like. I, I mean, I really like going out and seeing audiovisual performance. And, yeah. Yeah, and I like doing it myself. And so, yeah, I wanted to create a visual world for it as well. Okay. Awesome. We'll see how that. I, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Well, it's oh. good. I mean, I'm. I'm uh, so some people are smart and not out of the bag. But I, I, no, no, no. no. I mean, some people are smart and don't talk about things while they're while they're working on them. I'm always the person who talks about stuff while I'm working on it. Okay. But, um, I mean, I think that actually helps you bring it into fruition and actually hold you accountable for making it happen, right? Yeah, because exactly. If you're like, oh, I'm going to do this, and then you know nobody's there to like you know check you. Well, we're all we're all listening, and so we're going to be looking for it. Yeah, that's what my grandmother would do. Was yeah. Working on uh, when I was working on stuff, she would always ask if it's finished. Yeah. Um, so if I need if I need to get this done, I can. If just, you need me to check up on you just, in three months, I'll have like I'll set like an alarm, like a deadline, and I'll be like, hey, is it done? Is it done yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell your inner grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So, talk to me a little bit more about like the tracks that you you put on this like album. I mean, uh, are there any in particular that are, are your favorite or uh, that you found to be most connected to? Like, uh, what 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 are you most excited about with this project? Uh, well, I mean, I kind of like all of them. What I what I've discovered is you know because they go in some different directions and other people have some different favorites, mm -hmm. which is convenient. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there, there's some different kind of uh, rhythmic motivations behind some of them. Uh, the, the, there are these tracks that are kind of more ambient, uh, yeah. uh, but they uh, even the ambient tracks they're all kind of coming from some of the same musical materials. They just sort of deployed yeah. differently. So the, these ambient bookends are all, all kind of reconstituted from bits and pieces of the uh, of the dance track. Okay, awesome. And um, I'm really curious, um, you know, to sort of like uh, uh, hear or learn a bit more about um, you know, as an artist, like what. You know, your sort of musical journey looks like, and I was curious to know, like, how would you say that this, um, you know, new album is different from some of the work that you've done before in the past? Um, well, I worked on this one a lot. Okay. I think that was the. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think you know, there's some stuff that I do that kind of I throw out there very quickly, and this I really worked and reworked and redid, and yeah. a lot of stuff began as a, a live, uh, live jam or something. It was part of a live show, and then I went back and, and redid it, and then. The, the the thing that really made it come together was I got to work with uh, Lars Hemmerling, yeah. um, who did all the mixing, and um, and I'd never worked that way before, and it was really a terrific luxury to have somebody who could listen to them from a different perspective, yeah, and, sure, and, and kind of shape them in a different way. So, and I also I think that Lars had sort of has some has, has some kind of training in this, and uh, yeah. I think that the he also kind of sorted out a lot of these sort of complicated percussion instrumentation ideas so that the way that he hears them in space sound a yeah. bit like you've actually recorded a band or recorded real instruments even though they're all imaginary and they all come from inside of uh, inside the box. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Uh, so speaking of uh, large team you work with, um, I'm really curious, like, um, are there any other artists or people in your in the space right now that um, you really enjoy that uh, have you know, really great music out or that you found to be inspirational to you? Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm 
I'm really lucky to share a studio with Jamaica Souk. Um, oh, cool, nice. We don't see each other musically as much as we should because we share a studio, which yeah. means that we uh, have to kind of not be <laughs> yeah, there at the yeah, same yeah. time. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, yeah, I'm really a fan of Jamaica's music. It's also been, it's also really nice to see how her work has uh, evolved, mm -hmm. really how she's kind of matured as a as a musician, as a producer. And, yeah. um, I think the stuff that she's doing now sounds very different than the stuff even when I. Um, you know, met her a couple of years ago. Okay. So, so that's been exciting. Great. Um, Do you have any musical inspirations from earlier in your life, like as a kid? That that's sort this of would like... be a long. This would be a long interview. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I mean, tons and tons of people because I came from a classical music background. Okay. What, did you, what I was just a you... musical theater fan for a long time. Okay. So actually, so if you go into ah, nice. if you go into Schwutz, uh this this club, uh, this, there's a there's a All line. Schwutz. Yeah, there's a, I was really, I was really, I was really excited to see this line from, uh, 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 from the Birdcage, that's the, that's the film, from, uh, yeah. uh, uh, from the Kaj on the wall. So, I mean, the, the, for some, for some brief period of time, I got weirdly obsessed with musical theater. Yeah. And then somehow I had to get over that. Uh, but no, I came from no, the classical no music. No, musical theater, there's always been It's great. always there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I came from this concert music background, experimental music background. I, I still love going back to that. I think, um, I mean, I think I, techno kind of sounds like some kind of experimental yeah, music. It does. Yeah, it Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, uh, it is, it, I think at one point it was experimental because like techno in you know, um, comparison to many other genres is relatively new. So I think that like any new genre it had to be experimental at, at some point, right? Well, and I mean, it was an experimental, I mean, it just sort of as it evolves in the States and also as it kind of evolves out of industrial music in, in Germany, uh, in each of those threads, uh, and where you find it now, you know, it's a, it's an experimental form of music that can also be a folk music. So, mm. I, I mean, unlike this kind of classical world that that I came from, and um, the, it, it's not something that's sort of often some kind of elite uh, electronic sound facility sure. in Paris or something. You know, right. um, it was something that people were able to kind of uh, get access to very easily. And, yeah. and as you know, I think as we see this spread through more and more communities now, it still has that that um, it still has that kind of value for people. Do you play any instruments? Or, or what instruments? I play the piano. Oh, really? Okay, nice. Um, yeah, I still go back to the piano a okay. lot of the time. Nice. So, uh, and then I did, like, uh, since I still sing, I didn't sing on this record. I've never heard you sing before. But there's, there's Come, singing. Give us a few bars. Singing, singing, <laughs> they're singing, snuck, <laughs> I've snuck singing into other tracks. Okay, uh, nice. Uh, but uh, but piano yeah piano was okay. my piano was my main instrument. I actually grew up uh, playing the violin. I played like the violin okay. for like 14 years of like my youth, and also played the viola, cello, and the string bass. Mm -hmm. So I actually also come from like a classical music background. But you know what's interesting for me on the subject of like um, music from like my childhood, and I I always tell this story because I think it's it's something that I hold on to uh, so much is like. Um, you know, I really love like disco and like uh, old school R and B, like from like mm -hmm. the '70s and '80s. And you know, listening to it at as a as a kid, I didn't realize that this is going to be the music that I would also love now. And it was like uh, the music my parents used to listen to when they were growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, what was always so fascinating um, and so enjoyable for me listening to music from that that period is that like you know, uh, these, pe these people put out hits. Like with like a full piece of orchestra. I'm talking about like she, who's one of my favorite, my mom's favorite, and Patrice Russian, she's fucking amazing, and um, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like I mean, like yeah, yeah. you know, you're, you're dancing to this stuff, and like in, when they're making it, like they've got like 100 people, you know. Like, oh yeah, like these lush instrumentations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I, I feel that too. I think you know, even even if the even if the instrumentation is all electronic, yeah. uh, you hope that it has some of that some of that quality. I think the quality of listening. So it might not literally be those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the kind of uh, color of the instruments and positioning, spacing, mixing. Yeah, yeah. So that stuff is still there. Sweet. So really quick, I want to. I want all sort of listeners and uh, people joining us tonight to get a chance to know a little bit more about you. You're from Kentucky, right? I'm from Kentucky, that's right. Sweet. Um, so how long have you been in Berlin and what brought you here in the first place? I mean, it's been it's been six years. I really came here, I, I didn't honestly expect the hyper in the city to be as big as it has become. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> uh, isn't it? I came here for kind of music nerd reasons, which okay. was the thing that brought me back was really Ableton and Native Instruments and yeah. all of those kind of smaller inventors and uh, 
in instrument makers. Um, the, the, the chance to be kind of at the center of that was why I kept coming here. Yeah, sweet. Um, now there's this kind of cultural phenomenon of the rest of the city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's but all you know, here. It's, it's really great when uh, I do run into people from uh, Kentucky or from my part of the world. So uh, last weekend, speaking of musical inspirations, uh, you know, last weekend I got to go here. Non-compliant and back behind Yep, comes, I was also there. She comes from right across the uh, Ohio River. Um, oh, this nice. this weekend, another uh, a Kentuckian uh, uh, Black Madonna is playing, and um, yes. it's hard for me to express to these people how nice it is sometimes to have that to have that connection to see people like that. Um, yeah, it's like playing like in this a very house. Unlikely place to bump into people from home here in Berlin doing the things that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Well, I know that you've got like some amazing music for us. Um, Hopefully, and, uh, yeah. Well, we're really. It'll be improvised, so I don't know exactly what it's going to sound like. We're gonna. Uh, I'm actually really going to play it and see yeah, how I feel and see what comes out. We're going to give it a go. Well, Peter, thank you so much for for joining us and uh, you know being here down in the basement at our bar. Uh, looking forward to see what you have for us up your sleeve and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you all for joining us as well. Please stay tuned because Peter is about to bring the house down. So, hopefully. Yes. Cool. Yeah, thank Thanks you. so much. Yes. Yes. Pleasure. Oh. Mm -hmm. Awesome.